Dr. Deb Schreiben here. What's healthy? We are. I was reading an article the other day and it was really an interesting article. So I actually printed it off so I could talk about some of the stuff that was in this article. It was about the FDA says misinformation is a top killer. And I thought, hmm, interesting because I don't think that they're thinking about misinformation being a top killer quite the same as we are thinking misinformation is a top killer. So I thought it would really be worth talking about how the FDA views this and how we view it. So this was actually an interview that was done with the U.S. Food and Drug Administration um, Commissioner Robert Califf, and he s stated that it's the spread of misinformation that's killing Americans as access to information online is causing people to make choices that are harming their health. And you know, I partially agree with that and I partially don't agree with that because yes, I see people come into my office every single day and these are people that are well-educated, smart, smart people, and they're trying to figure out what's going on with themselves. So they buy all kinds of supplements and trendy things and tests even that they don't have any idea what it means and how to take these supplements or where they're coming from or if they're good quality. So in that sense, We've got a bunch of misinformation out there saying, hey, this is good, you should do this. Even our commercials tell kids, right? Tricks are for kids, or you should be cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs, or have a Coke and a smile. That's a lot of misinformation, because just because you're drinking Coke does not mean it's healthy for you, but it implies that. And then people think, oh, this is gonna make me happy. But are you happy when you're you know, doing an insulin shot into your stomach every morning? Are you happy when you're taking metformin, or glipizide, or glimipiride, or all all the other blood sugar uh, uh, medications that people are taking, does that make you help, feel good? Because it wouldn't make me feel good because most of the time when you're taking these medications, you're not even well managed, you're barely managed. I have patients come in all the time and they're taking this med, this med, this med, this med, and I look at them and I say, well, how do you feel? You know, is your brain fog gone? Is your memory better? Do you have lots of energy? Is sleeping like a baby? And they're not. So you see, misinformation on the web can go both ways. Ways, right it's like they're I think we're learning a lot about the COVID-19 vaccine which they said oh everything is super safe and this and that and the other thing about it and now we're looking at it and seeing all the side effects and the ramifications of it and they were trying to you know sweep it under that carpet so nobody talks about it but it's all starting to come out because you know at the end of the day this stuff does always end up coming out so I thought it was really important to talk about this stuff um Kaylee Califf is calling for increased regulation in the form of, quote, specific authorities at the FDA, FTC, and other areas to find misinformation and counter it. But you see, if he was doing it the right way, he would be also going after the misinformation with the medications, with the crap that's in our food. I don't know if you know this, but I just learned this not too long ago, that in um, pork, they have actually been using mRNA va vaccines for five years, but didn't tell any of us. And so People were eating pork thinking it's healthy for you, thinking they're making better choices, that it's not all modified and that they're not taking all kinds of hormones. And then we find out that for years, they've been actually giving them mRNA vaccines, which can change their, their RNA and their DNA. And then that then changes how we can break down that as food. So sneaky how they're doing this and they try to put a spin on it like it's gonna be good for you if we add all of this regulation and a lot of times it's not. So, you know, this is what I always say. Um, you got to look at the numbers, right? So more than 250,000 patients die each year from medical errors. This is called iatrogenic issues, right? It is the third leading cause of death. That is huge. And you know what? Nobody ever pays the price for that. That's just, oh, sorry, it's you signed that form before you went into surgery. Or, oh, sorry, wasn't our fault. You know, we can't be perfect at everything. But really, these are mistakes that have been made. Wrong medications, wrong dosing of medications, mixing medications surgical procedure surgical procedures that failed all kinds of different reasons that can cause these iatrogenic 
um, errors or these medical errors where people are actually dying from them. Um, more Americans between the ages of 18 and 45 die from fentanyl overdose than any other cause, including suicide, motor vehicle accidents, COVID-19, and cancer. But Califf didn't mention any of this stuff when he was talking about um, misinformation on the web as being a top killer. Um, and you know what I also thought was really quite interesting was that the U.S. life expectancy is dropping. So if the stuff that they're doing and giving us and injecting and how they're modifying our food and using pesticides, herbicides, insecticides is supposed to be better for us, but we are dying younger, um, something doesn't make sense to me. And I think we should be talking about this stuff because I don't know about you, but I try really hard to eat healthy and make good choices. And I want to know that what's labeled on that label is in fact what that food really is and I think they've been even been trying to not label things so um, I know there's other laws that are trying to get passed about how you have to label it if it's genetically modified you have to label it if it's this that or the other thing and so you know, this is important, and a lot of people don't even realize that they should be asking the questions. That's why things like small farmers markets are really good. You can go, you can actually talk to those local farmers and see what are you doing. You know, a lot of the local farmers cannot afford the designation of organic because it's quite expensive. Um, probably last time I looked, it was either ten or fifteen thousand dollars to get that designation, and then you have to pay yearly, and you have to pay for them to come and make sure you're doing it right. And a lot of the little farmers can't afford to do that. So if you actually have a discussion with them at the farmers market, they'll tell you, "No, I don't use these big, huge, heavy pesticides, herbicides, insecticides, but I just can't afford." For that uh, designation of organic so that's one thing that you can do to make it a little bit easier and better so that you can get some better quality food or like some of us you can start growing it yourself I have a hydroponic garden that I love 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 and um, all of the um, little seedlings that I get are hundred percent organic and coming from a good source so I know that I'm trying to make the best choices I can um, as often as I can um, another thing is you know why are we not using medical products as effectively and efficiently as peer countries? And a lot of it has to do with the choices that people make because of the things that they're seeing on the internet and the things that they're seeing on TV and about the things that are really influencing their thought processes. So I know, you know, some of you know this, some of you don't, but there's lots of ads and things like that that are out on the sidelines and people don't even know it and it's just getting into your heads. And then there's the big ones, right, where they're talking about it and you're hearing it and you're seeing it and it's drugs and it's you know all these foods that are highly processed that are not healthy for us and you know I even the other day saw a um a product that I picked up I was just looking at it it was organic I think it was maybe oatmeal or uh, maybe it was a salad dressing and it said organic canola oil okay so organic canola oil is better than regular canola oil but regular canola oil or organic canola oil is still not good for us because that has too much of the wrong omegas and it does not help our cardiovascular system and our blood pressure and our cholesterol and all of the other things can really can be affected by that so you have to be really critical in your thinking when you're reading labels when you're looking at food choices and making food choices so that you can be super healthy um, let's see let me see if I can give you some of the um the numbers that were in this article it says in the US life expectancy is three to five years lower than that in other high-income countries that's not good. It should be going up, up, up if if all of this stuff that we're eating and all these medications and all the drugs and all that stuff are doing what they're supposed to be doing, but instead it's going down, down, down. And in 2022, the U.S. Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, the CDC, also announced that life expectancy had dropped for two years in a row, 2020, 2021, um, declining by nearly one year, right? And this decline, um, a lot of people are thinking it's COVID, and you know what? It was not. So if blamed COVID-19 for 74% of the decline from 2019 to 2020 and 50% of the decline from 20 to 21, but also stated that 16% of the drop was due to accidents and unintentional um, injuries. So there are definitely 
other contributors causing to this decline, but you got to look at the main contributors, which is the quality of our foods. We're not sleeping. Our adrenals are off. Or we have high levels of inflammation, which impact our gut where, you know, most of our immune system is living in our gut. So we can't fight this stuff off. I was also reading another article actually this morning talking about how one of the best ways to stay healthy and for longevity is to have a healthy immune system, which means you have to have a healthy gut, which means the food that you're putting inside yourself is the stuff that you have to really look at, right? You ever heard that old saying, you are what you eat? Well, you actually are what you eat. And if you're eating pesticides, herbicides, insecticides, fungicides, genetically modified foods, things that your body can't identify as food, then it's not healthy for us. Our bodies don't know how to process it and break it down. Have you ever asked yourself why there are so many more cancers, why there are so many more autoimmune diseases today than ever before in history? And, you know, why are so many adults having allergic reactions to foods that they've eaten for 40 years and then all of a sudden they're having an allergic reaction to it? Well, that makes you wonder what is going on with the food. So my take on that is all of these foods that are genetically modified with all that other stuff, you know, as a kid, we were eating whole food, not processed food. We were getting all the benefits of it. Then they're changing the makeup of it. So when our we go to eat it now, our body says, wait a minute, that's not the food that I grew up on. That's not the food that my body knows as food. And then it doesn't know what to do with it. So that's, you know, something that you really need to think about. And hopefully that will answer some of your questions because I get that question all the time. I was eating shrimp and all of a sudden I had a, a anaphylactic reaction. I never had one of those before. I had to go to the hospital or whatever it was that they were eating, gluten, dairy, you name it. All of these things are modified and not the same as they were when we were younger and when we were kids. So that's why a lot of us are having allergic reactions as adults instead of um, having them as kids and then growing out of them. We're actually kind of growing into having allergic reactions, if you can imagine that, right? So, you know, Califf places primary blame for Americans declining health on that vague term misinformation. And like I said, I think he's using it differently than we would be using it. Um, he says, Califf described a public shift away from truth, at least as he sees it, as a bigger factor. Um, he argued that online debate on issues related to health and medicine have led to people being deluded, quote, into gravitating toward ineffective or dangerous advice. And, you know, I want to talk about that too because, you know, a lot of them they're saying is take drugs, take this medicine, do this procedure. And if you actually look at it, you know, there's like back surgery, 50% or less is successful. Um, there's a lot of different things that I think are really, really important for you to be considering. And I think it's really important for you to talk to people who are experts in this arena, in functional medicine, in integrative medicine, in conventional medicine, so that you can make a really good decision for you. Have a question? Email us at feelbetter at lakepointwellnesscenter.com. You can always go to feelbetterhere.com for more information and to make an appointment, call 770-974-5215.